Chelsea Football Club broke the transfer record twice. But the question today is, why is Enzo and Caicedo not working? Why are the two highly rated midfielders not acting as perfect complements to themselves? So, uh, clearly, Capital actually came to Chelsea with a clear blueprint. And one of the blueprints that uh, clearly came with was to actually revamp Chelsea's midfield. So revamping with Chelsea's midfield involved acquiring young talented players and this saw clearly capital spend over 250 million dollars to revamp Chelsea's midfield. So why did Chelsea's midfield need revamp? That's the question. So Chelsea's midfield predominantly consisted of Ngolo Kante, Jorginho and Matteo Kovacic. Three players who played remarkably well and coming to play uh, with each other or two of them composing the Chelsea's midfield. But majority of these players were running out of contracts and actually were leaving the club and clearly had to do some massive rebuild in this department. In came Enzo Fernandez, Moises Caicedo and Romeo Lavia. Two of the, of the three players actually costed more than 100 million British pounds with Romeo Lavia coming in later and a player who has not featured in a game this season, showcasing how player like were determined to fill this position. Now, the question that you're going to ask yourself today is, why is Enzo Fernandez and Moises Caicedo not working with Chelsea? These two players were actually rumored and tipped to be the next big thing in world football, with Enzo looking quite great for his Argentinian national side and Benfica, while Moses Caicedo dominating the Premier League with Brighton in Roberto Di Zabi's system. Now, the situation between the two has not panned out as expected, with Chelsea lingering in mid-table, not even in the top half of the table, and the midfield of Chelsea looking quite porous and susceptible to transitions and counter-attacks. Now, this might be heavily be blamed on Maurizio Pochettino and his tactics. And I'm going to explain to you why and how is Maurizio Pochettino's tactical philosophy exposing Chelsea's midfield and working in the detriment of Caicedo and Enzo. But before we start our analysis, do not forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos like this. Now, before we start, we're going to look at the stats. And the first stat that we're going to look at is the progressive passes. Now, before the two came together, Moises Caicedo actually uh, had 24% of his passes progressive, while Enzo was 67, looking, making Enzo a more offensive player. But when you look at ball recoveries, Moises Caicedo beats Enzo Fernandez because he has 63 compared to Enzo Fernandez 26. And this showcases how he's more defensive. But short creation uh, passes, Enzo Fernandez beats him, meaning that one would have been more defensive while the other would have been more an attacking, creative box-to-box -box midfielder. Now, when you look at the complementary graphs of the two players, one thing that you can easily not fail to see is the final third entries. And you can see that Enzo Fernandez has that in High, and Caicedo has most ball recoveries and most interceptions, indicating again that this is a defensive midfielder with a number eight. But why is it not working? And the first area we're going to look at is without the ball, because both of them have been good in possession, but the problem has been without possession. And without possession, we're going to look at how they try to win the ball, and that is Mauricio Pochettino's high press. We're going to look at how these teams coordinate the high press and how both midfielders move with regards to these high press systems. Now, Chelsea look to press their opponents higher up the pitch. And when opponents are trying to build from the back, what you will normally see is that one midfielder would spring out from the number 10 position and immediately join Nicholas Jackson in the press as they try to go man to man with the back line. Now, the situation is the role of Enzo and Caicedo because one of them actually springs forward from the midfield position to pick up the deepest midfielder to prevent the ball from being played in midfield. But Chelsea's press is not well coordinated. And this is how Chelsea usually fail to win these duels. And how does this even happen? Now, Moises Caicedo is usually left to try and cover two 
fielders, that is the oppositions, number 8 and number 10. Now, the problem here is that uh, the Chelsea's back line and attacking line act as two blocks when they are pressing. There is a higher block and a lower block. Now, what happens is that the midfield is the one that suffers because the midfield is now tasked to be the one that covers a lot of distances. And this is where problems start to emerge because midfielders drop deep, immediately receive the ball because one midfielder is usually overloaded trying to mark two players because Chelsea's backline does not play push forward to compress this space in midfield. And because if the backline push forward, a center back will step out or a full back to try and help the midfielder. What happens is that Caicedo is usually left isolated in midfield. And this is what makes Chelsea bypass Caicedo easily and this has resulted in Moises Caicedo committing a lot of fouls this season because he has to stop the attack from proceeding towards the last line of defense. The pressing high up the pitch is well coordinated but the back line not pushing forward is creating a lot of problems. Now look at how Chelsea are pressing. Jackson and Kono Galaga are pushing forward. Enzo Fernandez has already stepped from midfield, looking to already push onto Fulham's deepest pivot. But Moises Caicedo is now being tasked to look after two midfielders in the pitch. Now, Mauricio Pochettino had adapted this by playing Chelsea in a narrow 4-2-3-1 system. But the problem with this narrow block is that they have horizontal compatibility, but not vertical. Now, how does this affect the two players when they are building from the back? Now, the problem is when Chelsea are pressing, again, their forward and back line acts as two blocks and the distances between the forward line and the back line are usually huge. And this is where problems start to emerge because now teams start to play around Chelsea. The centre-backs spread out wide and play almost as high as full-backs. And what happens is that the full-backs also stretch high up the pitch, the way Liverpool were actually playing against Chelsea. And now the midfield is the one that has to leave the midfield region to come and cover these spaces in the wide regions. And how, do the mid and how does this affect the structure of the midfield? So if a midfielder drops to receive the ball in this kind of position, the two midfielders will have to shift because one of them cannot shift while the other sits in midfield because now a forward can drop to occupy that position. So both of them shift to try and mitigate that overload that has been created. Now when one midfielder already shifts to try and mitigate this overload, what happens is that now spaces have already been created in midfield and this leaves acres of space that can be exploited with wingers or midfielders or fullbacks coming to occupy these positions. And a quick shift of play can really expose Chelsea's other side to vulnerabilities and weaknesses, as we saw in the game against Spurs, that if a fullback comes in, then a winger can be played in. Now, Chelsea are pressing Tottenham, but they are pressing Tottenham in a narrow 4-2-3-1 system. Now, Tottenham have identified Chelsea's weakness in that Chelsea are creating a central overload, and Tottenham can actually play around Chelsea. So how can uh, Tottenham do this? Now, James Madison, being an intelligent player, drops from one position, picks the ball, pings the ball onto Pedro Porro, who's occupied that midfield position, who lays the ball towards the runs of Kulovetsky. Now, when Kulovetsky is receiving the ball in this kind of position, what you see is that, and what you expect is that Kulovetsky to immediately make those runs. Now, Let's try and uh, do some analysis on how this is detrimental for Chelsea and how having these gapping holes between the front line and the back line is creating a lot of problems for the midfield, making midfielders cover huge positions. Now, when Chelsea did revert to be pressing in a 4-4-2 with Conor Gallagher joining Jackson, especially when they are trying to press a wide uh, center backs who have split wide. What happens again is the two midfielders who have to come forward. One of them to cover the two midfielders high while the other has to sit deep. Now, if the back line had pushed forward, this would have been easier. But because Chelsea's back line is not ready, especially Disasi and Thiago Silva, are not quite comfortable playing high because they will leave spaces in behind and they are not comfortable whether Petrovic can step out to cover these spaces, though Petrovic can. What happens is that the spaces now are compensated by creating a huge hole in midfield. 
So what happens when this huge hole is formed in midfield? We have two blocks. We have an attacking block that is pressing high and we have a defensive block that is staying deep. Now, the problem now is this picture that we see here. Players have pushed forward to press Liverpool. Caicedo is left in midfield to cover those acres of space by himself. But you cannot see Chelsea's backline. You cannot see Chelsea's backline pushing forward to give Caicedo that assurance that we are, we, are, we are also behind here to protect you. But now Caicedo is being put in a 2v1 situation. Brentford also exposed this when Chelsea tried to press them high because they were going directly to Ivan Toni, who would immediately receive the ball directly from the goalkeeper and look to lay the balls for the two midfielders who are playing behind Enzo Fernandez. Now, when the two midfielders receive the ball, they immediately win the second balls over Caicedo, and now Brentford has five players running at Chelsea's back four. Uh, compare this with Manchester City. Look at the way Manchester City are pressing Liverpool. Haaland has already joined to press Virgil van Dijk. De Bruyne is already pressing uh, Joe Gomez, while Doku is ready to spring out to press Kwanzaa. But look at Manchester City's backline. It has pushed forward, and therefore the distance between Erling Haaland and Akanji, who's playing as the centre-back, is small. Now, Chelsea's other problem is in possession. Mauricio Pochettino's possession strategy is not looking quite well for Chelsea because Chelsea are creating overloads, yes, and players are, are creating uh, solutions for their own problems on the pitch. But Mauricio Pochettino's tactical philosophy, especially in attack, cannot work in the current Premier League setup because it leaves a lot of gaping holes when the team is trying to attack. And I'm going to tactically explain to you how this happens. And this is how this happens. Now, when, team, when Chelsea is stifling teams in the defensive third, what will happen is Cole Palmer will automatically pick up the left right half space position. So Gallagher is the one who's supposed to pick up the left half space position. But again, this is where the problem is because the midfield is usually disjointed. At least you need two midfielders to be occupying that position. But Pochettino wants both his fullbacks to push forward. And also other than both his fullbacks pushing forward, he also wants his one of his pivots in Enzo Fernandez to also change his position on the pitch and look to push forward. Now, when Gusto has already pushed forward, we expect Gallagher to occupy the left half space channel. But what happens is that Pochettino wants Enzo Fernandez to use his late entries in the box to push forward high up the pitch. We've seen Enzo's goals increase, but the problem is rather than Gono Gallagher dropping deep to help Caicedo, what happens is that now Chelsea are left in, in a vulnerable position with Caicedo being the only player in midfield. So what happens now is that you have a lot of players overloading the opposition backline, but you only have two center backs who are also playing deeper with a center midfielder who's supposed to cover all the spaces left. This is a problematic because now there are acres of space that only one player is supposed to cover and it's, it's creating a, a snowball effect because when the ball is lost in these higher regions of pressure, what happens is now the opposition is able to transition from the defensive third to effectively attack to center backs, meaning that the back line is well exposed and can easily be exploited. An example is this game against Liverpool. You can see that Chelsea are committing many players forward. You can see even the position of uh, Enzo Fernandes is that he's also almost playing like the, uh, the attacking midfielder high up the pitch. Kono Gallagher is also high up the pitch. But the problem now is Caicedo is the one who's supposed to cover these spaces. Now, Chelsea lose possession. And look at the pos where Caicedo and Enzo are. Caicedo is high. Enzo is high. Kilwell is high. Gusto is now tracking back and Caicedo has to cover that space and cover the two center backs. And this is where the problems usually start for Chelsea. Now, in this other clip is where you'll see uh, the huge problem at Chelsea. Look at Chelsea's attacking structure. Caicedo is playing in between the two center backs, but there are no midfielders on the right uh, side. Now, if Gallagher will play with Caicedo 
as the two midfielders, allowing Sterling, Palmer and Chilwell to attack, they will easily disjoint Manchester City. But this is creating a sense of vulnerability for Chelsea because if Manchester City is able to intercept the ball in these kinds of instances, then they are immediately running at Disasi when he is by himself. And these are the sum of the tactical problems that Mauricio Pochettino has failed to address, especially at his time at Chelsea. And this is the positions of player during attack. Compare this with Arsenal. Look at Arsenal. Arsenal are pinning Sheffield United back, but you can see Arsenal having many bodies in midfield. They are preventing that midfield progression with the ball. And you can see the position of Jorginho with Rice and Ben White playing alongside him, ensuring they give him protection when he's defending. Again, you can see here again, Jorginho has received the ball and he's looking to thread that through ball for Kai Havertz. But again, you can see how Gabriel, a centre-back, has also stepped forward to look and try to cover that space, while Ben White has also dropped in midfield to fill in that position. Now, the difference between Chelsea and Arsenal is that Arsenal has limited the number of spaces between their players, meaning that their players are able to play close to each other, retaining and maintaining possession, denying the opposition any time and space on the ball. But with Chelsea, the spaces are very huge. Another problem that we need to look at is Kono Gallagher. Now, Pochettino prefers to have Kono Gallagher start because of his energetic press when he wants his team to press high. But Kono Gallagher does not understand his role when the team does not have uh, when the team is in possession, where he's supposed to drop alongside Caicedo. And problems need to be, questions need to be asked about Mauricio Pochettino's tactical philosophy. Do you want Enzo to push forward? Ben, if Enzo pushes forward, who fills his gap? Who covers his gap? Because if you leave those huge acres of gaps for Caicedo to cover, in the recent Premier League, in the current Premier League structure, this cannot happen. Now, a lot of fans are really sympathizing with the two because both of them want to enjoy their football. But the tactical system of the club is not allowing both of the two excellent players to thrive. Moises Quesedo is picking a lot of bookings because he's not able to stop these situations. So the question is, how can Chelsea remedy this? How can Mauricio Pochettino remedy this and ensure his team is back on track? That is what we'll be discussing in our next video. Do not forget to stick around to watch that video on how both Caicedo and Enzo Fernandez can improve their situations. Thank you for watching this video till the end and thanks for watching.